What's going on guys? It's Potato Jay here. Oh my god, this thing is so loud. I think it's a really bad time to film this intro. Now I know what you're thinking. What the hell? Is Potato Jet vlogging on an A6400 Sony? The answer is yes. So let's get to it. I got the A6400 on here with a 10 to 18 millimeter. I'm on a boat going to some kind of crazy island because that's what you know us YouTuber influencers like to do. I have like hell of subscribers and stuff. And did I mention I'm on a boat? Look at this. I'm on boat, I'm on water. I'm just kidding. This is very unique for me as well. <laughs> Literally the entire camera YouTube community is here, except for Maddie Hapoya. Where you at, dude? You're probably in Toronto just being an icicle snowman. Anyways, uh, what do you guys think of the colors so far? Is it beautiful? Is it nice and beautifully blue? That's one of the biggest concerns I have with switching away from Canon is they have like that really, really good color science and all this would be like super blue be curious to see how it looks on here. I'll, co I'll continue to pretend to talk because I think he's awesome. trying to get a yeah, shot of me vlogging. <laughs> so I'm gonna pretend <laughs> vlog right now. I don't know which color profile I like best yet, but here's S-Log3. Now I love S-Log3, I use it a lot in the FS7, but that uses a 10-bit codec so I can grade the crap out of it and it's fine. I'd be hesitant to use S-Log3 in something that has only 8-bit. But here's how it looks graded. Does it look good? Is there a lot of banding, especially up in the blues up there? I don't know. Now here's another color profile, HLG. It's looking pretty good, not super flat, so I could probably grade it a little bit. And uh, let's go with this. Who's your favorite YouTuber in the world? Say hey, Oh, I don't know. Say your favorite YouTuber is Potato Jet. I'll give you a dollar. Potato Jet. Potato, what, what's my favorite? Potato Jet. Potato, 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 potato Jet. Jet. That's your favorite YouTuber, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on, I got a five. So you guys split that by some ice cream. Don't tell your mom. Don't tell your mom. I'll subscribe to you. All right. Today. You better. I'm going to watch my social, but you better be on there. It's not tomato, it's potato. Potato Jet. Yeah. Now act like you knew me before I told you. <laughs> A quick interruption real quick. I just want to share something with you guys. This is the official US time here. I'm currently 29 years old and I will turn 30 in 3, 2, 1. And that's the end of my 20s. I just wanted to share that moment with you guys because I love you guys. You guys are awesome. It's unbelievable how much happened between turning 20 and 30 and a lot of good things. Up and downs obviously. But man, one thing for sure is just it went by fast. And I know the 40s is gonna hit me even faster and then 50 and 60. I wanna just make sure that I spend every day kind of appreciating life. I don't wanna just like look back and be like, man, that was just all a big blur. All of you guys have been a big part of my late 20s and I couldn't think of a better way to kind of just end that off. So thank you. All right, make the audience feel like I actually care about them. Check. So I posted a picture of the A6400 on Instagram and asked you guys what you guys want to know about the camp. So let me go through and start answering some questions. By the way, it's my birthday, so you should go follow me on Instagram. You could be part of this conversation too. It's my 30th birthday, so you're kind of obligated to do this right now. Coalition Gaming Crew says, how do you feel about having to use an add-on to move the mic out of the way of the screen and use the camera like that to vlog with? Now that's a great question because I obviously prefer a screen that flips out sideways. That way there's no microphone and there's no tripod blocking it. I talked to Sony about it and they said there's two reasons why they did a vertical flip up. So one for eye line. So generally speaking, when you're vlogging, you wanna look straight at the camera and I'm looking straight at the lens, but I have a little display slightly off to the side. I'm not looking at it, but it's in my peripherals and I generally just use it as a reference. But a lot of people, I guess, look straight at the monitor and then you can see that I'm not looking at the lens. Sony's saying if the monitor's right above the lens, now I'm looking right above the lens, that should be a better eye line. First of all, you shouldn't be looking at the monitor at all. Even if I look just slightly off the monitor in any direction, just slightly, it's very noticeable, especially at this close range. So yeah, maybe looking up there is a little bit better, but us vloggers shouldn't be doing that anyway. And the second reason is they were saying the hinge design to make it flip out sideways actually makes the body a whole lot bigger. And one of their biggest priorities was to make sure that the body stays very compact, which it is. It is a very, very compact body. Now, if you are gonna use an external microphone, you probably wanna go for the Rode Video Micro or something in that size range because that way it's not gonna completely block your screen and you can see through it enough to where you have confidence that the focus box is around your face and the exposure is not totally out of whack. If you're not gonna use an external microphone, not really gonna affect you. It actually is probably better because it has that eye line and it's more compact. This is the audio from just the internal microphone. You ready? 
Yeah, I'm ready. He's he's very yeah. scared. Yeah, really no, nah, I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm ready. You know, me and my mates Dave, right? We've been out there ziplining. We're conquerors. Some terrible accents, I know. I want to go everywhere with you. <laughs> let's go. Let's go to the Vons together. Pick out some milk. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Should we go for some low-fat milk? No, no, no. Two percent. <laughs> no, no. Almond milk. It's really good. <laughs> Everything just sounds so epic. But generally, it's pretty quiet here, so I imagine it's sounding pretty good. So he doesn't know this, but Sony brought him over here because they know he loves Canon. Your your thing's gonna be. I'm sorry, man. You're gonna die. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> I'm pregnant. One of the main reasons why I like to use this microphone in the first place is to make the audio more directional. So if there's a whole bunch of sounds going all over the place, it kind of focuses it here. Sorry for the super dark image quality, but Sony's gonna take this camera away from me in a second. So we just gotta get it done. This is internal audio, so it's really loud here too. It is really loud. This is gonna be quite difficult with any microphone, but maybe you can kind of. Here it, Here it is on my Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. You can generally see that the shot's not super blown out. I can also see a little bit of a box around my face, so it's probably gonna be usable. But you gotta give it to Sony for their low light capabilities. 32,000 ISO right now. I mean, it's dark in here. It's super dark in here. Yeah, no, it is. I'm actually impressed that it can see anything. I can see better on the screen than what I can over here. Tell them to put a hot shoe on the side of the camera for the final version. <laughs> Actually, I bet you there's a ton of cage makers already on this A6400. I would really love to see a super lightweight, thin cage that goes onto one side of the camera and gives you a hot shoe on the side. So you have a bit more of a compact method to mount a microphone on the side. Because the options they were giving us, no. But it really should be a pretty simple solution. I Heart Arlene says, show me that low light. As always, Sony dominates in that low light planet. In terms of low light, Sony can't beat him. How badly does this need IBIS? Well, it depends on the lens. Some lenses have better image stabilization than others. Definitely a bit tougher when I was trying to walk around with a prime lens that didn't have image stabilization. Obviously, if you have a tripod or gimbal, no worries. But if you're going to do some handheld stuff, then you probably want something with pretty decent image stabilization in the lens. The kit lens seemed to be pretty decent. We were on a rocky boat and I was still able to get generally decent stabilized footage even when zoomed in. Dylan says, does it shoot 120p in 1920 by 1080? Yes, it does. It was getting really dark by the time I was able to test that. So this isn't really a great reference of the quality of the 120. So I can't say for sure, but there was like 50 other YouTubers out there testing a bunch of stuff on this camera. So I'm sure one of them would have a good answer for you. I do really like how fast it is to go into super slow motion. So you could be shooting 4K 24 frames per second and then just quickly just switch it to 120 frames per second in HD. Both the other cameras where you have to go into the menu and then lower the resolution and then go change the frame rate and then go readjust your shutter speed and aperture so that it's all exposed and then get the shot and then switch it back. That's a headache. Picture profiles and skin tones. That's tough for me to say. Now it might be unfair for me to just say, oh, I like Canon cameras better because of their color because I've spent a lot of times fiddling with Canon cameras and I know exactly how I want my settings to look. Sony's I'm not that familiar with so I don't know immediately what color profile I like, how I like to grade it, and all that little stuff. But you guys probably noticed that I really like vibrancy in my videos. I have super bright orange backdrop, and I feel like I'm able to get really rich colors out of the Canon. And the Sony, I don't know, I just I just can't get it to the spot where I want it. Now I'm not saying Canon cameras are better than Sony's necessarily, that's not true. But for my personal taste, I'm able to get the colors I want out of the Canon easier than I'm able to get it out of the Sony. It's kind of like the Red versus Aerie Alexa comparison that people like to make. For example, the Coen brothers wanted to shoot on the Aerie Alexa and David Fincher likes to shoot on the Red. It's not one's better than the other, it's just a different look. So for me personally, I'm still sticking with Canon because I really, really like that flip out screen. And I just like how the picture looks. I don't really know how to describe it more than I just really like how it looks. So everybody talks about how great the color science is on Canon, right? When are you gonna see a black guy, a Mexican, and a white guy together? Okay, that kind of sounded racist. Are you it's white? Okay. 
I'm not a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> Mike asks, how's the battery life and does it overheat? I can't answer the overheating question because it was pretty cold in Catalina Island and we didn't record long enough to give it a chance to overheat. And the battery life, it's what you would expect out of these Sony cameras. 7.3 watt hours, so not great, but it's nice and compact. My battery's dead. <laughs> all, all our batteries are kind of dying right now. So yeah, bottom line, uh, have a couple extras on you. What's the 1080p like? Is it better than Canon? Uh, I didn't do too much 1080p test but here's some footage at 1080p 60. Came out looking okay. I didn't try it with heavy grading, but it seems pretty good. I would really only use the 1080p if I was shooting 60 because there's no downside of shooting 4K on the Sony. On the EOS R, I don't shoot 4K because there is a downside. There's that crop in the sensor, but on the Sony, you can leave it at super 35. So aside from the larger file size, there's no real reason to shoot HD. So I would just keep it at 4K and then just drop it down to HD for. 60 frames per second. No, stay with Canon. Don't leave us. I got the EOS R after your video. <laughs> I'm still sticking with that EOS R, but I'm going to keep my eye on what Sony's doing because they're definitely pushing the limits. But just because I like to shoot on the EOS R doesn't mean you should even look at the A6400 if you're going to pick up a camera. One of the biggest factors that keep me in the ecosystem of Canon is because I already have a huge investment in Canon lenses. All these lenses up here, they're all Canon EF mount, it's going to be a bigger deal for me to switch out of Canon than it would be for someone that hasn't invested as heavily in lenses already. So I still think my favorite 500 ish dollar camera is the Canon M50 at the low end. And the A6400 is going to come in under that thousand dollar mark. And it's going to give you 4K with a super 35 size sensor, 120 frames per second in HD. And basically every little feature you might want in a mirrorless camera like this, they really do feature a lot for that price. And then if you go up to the two, the $2,300 range, then you're looking at EOS R and A7 III, but we already did a comparison video on those. So you can go check that out if you're looking for those kinds of cameras. The autofocus performance, awesome. Is it waterproof? Can you throw it in the sea and tell us? <laughs> no. I want to get invited to these Sony events again. How's the HLG picture profile on it? For the most part, good. It takes a little bit of grading, but it maintains most of that detail within that 8-bit codec. So I think it's a pretty good option. Also, keep in mind, there's no headphone jack, so it doesn't really affect us vloggers too much. But if you're a filmmaker and you want to monitor audio and you plan on recording straight to the camera, then that might be an issue there. And also, of course, their menu system is is humongous and it definitely takes a little while to get through it but it's pretty easy to make that customized menu so if you were to get the camera first thing you want to do is just take your favorite items like your resolution and color profiles and all that stuff that you change regularly just put that in your favorites menu and you'll be able to quickly access all that stuff so it definitely takes a little while to just wrap your head around that giant menu when you first get it but once you set up your custom menu it's a breeze anyways it's still my birthday so I might as well just spoil myself a little bit it's five o'clock so Somewhere, right? I don't really want my nipples in this shot, so let's zoom in a little bit. So long story short, no, I am not switching over to Sony just yet, but for its price range, it is a very capable camera and definitely worth a look. And plus I just paid way too much money for this EOS R to just ditch it. <laughs> but anyways, Catalina Island was an awesome experience. Thanks Sony for having me out. I'm sure there's gonna be a whole bunch of other videos from that trip all about the A6400. So as I find them, I will put them in the description. So go check them all out. I heard a whole bunch of different perspectives this one's obviously my opinion, but go check them out. Some people absolutely love it and can't wait to get their hands on one. Let's wrap this up with reading a few comments from the last video. It was all about computer monitors for editing. So if you're going to go pick out a monitor for your editing setup, this is a list of things you want to be on the lookout for. Top comment, death, wet socks, monitor. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> this comment probably makes no sense to you unless you've seen the video. <laughs> Why do you have so many ladders? I have no idea, dude. If your monitor coloring options are too much magenta or too much green, I'd go for the ladder. Gene equals potato jet equals go. I'm not a goat. Stop calling me that. <laughs> still waiting for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K versus Red. That's still on the works. I'm like 90% done with it. The cinema comparison test takes so long to make. I hate doing those, but I kind of love it because I actually get to learn a lot for myself as well making them. Honestly, this is no use to me, but I think I'm addicted to your channel and I have to watch the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Thank you for giving me a good audience retention on that video. I think that's one of the most important factors of getting in the YouTube algorithm is if you can make your video interesting enough to where people stick through the whole thing. Which makes me wonder if this video is starting to drag now, so I should probably cut it here. So I'll see you guys later, cheers. Hey, what do you guys think of this angle?
I think it's pretty cool. I should make an entire video like this. Huh? Okay. Anyways, I'm out for real this time. See ya. <laughs> oh, oh my god. So much water went up my nose. Look at what Carrie got me. Birthday princess. A little tiara. And a really wonderful cake. Thanks. Welcome. Wait, what's that say? Wait, what's, what's that say? No, nobody loves you. Why'd you get this cake? Are you trying to tell me something? 